Hey friends, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is a wedding painting that I started last Saturday. Today, now it's Thursday, so this is five days, five, six days ago. And uh, I talked already a little bit here on my channel about uh, this particular experience. I won't repeat all that again. Um, I'll just repeat that <laughs> I felt like this is the one, the one of the first wedding painting after about 90 weddings. I felt like this was the first one that I really bombed, that I really did a bad job on. Um, not a huge deal, just a little bit embarrassing and a little bit rattling to my self-confidence. Um, I'm going, of course, I'm going to finish it and it's going to be lovely. It already is pretty much lovely. Um, here's a photograph and there's the painting. I used, did use a grid method to get this, this down. And, uh, but I want to talk about a couple things. Number one, um, if you look at the photograph here, there are no hands whatsoever. This, as is often the case when I'm taking pictures for a wedding reception, um, the lighting is quite low, right? It's a first dance, it's a reception, the lighting is romantic, and that creates quite a challenge for um, anybody who happens to be there <laughs> taking photographs, like myself. Um, so the, the hands in the photograph, let me show you again, are completely um, fuzzed out. Yes, Susan, this is oil. Thanks for asking. I, my, all of, virtually all of my paintings are acrylic underneath, virtually all of them, acrylic underneath and oil on top, as is the case here. Um, so here's, do you see the hands are blurred because of the low light, so long exposure. Oops, sorry about that bump. Um, so I have to make up hands completely. And uh, this isn't really the part that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk about finishing these faces. But uh, before we get to that, let's finish these hands. And it gives me another opportunity to just repeat this a little bit, a teaching point uh, that um, most people would do well to learn, to grasp. Anytime you're painting a highly variegated, that means varied, busy subject matter, which in certainly includes faces and hands. I have a three-step formula. The three steps can be subdivided into more steps than that, but it's basically three steps, okay? It is mid-tone first, dark detail second, highlights third. Now, mid-tones can be more than one mid-tone, like mid-tone different flesh colors. The darks can be more than one dark, and the lights can be more than one light. Do you understand? But the order is quite important. Now, I've already started, as you can see, on these hands, so let me just try to bring you up to speed as quickly as I can. First of all, let me admit, let me confess something uh, that I use. This is crazy. If you're new to my channel, this you, you won't. This will be crazy to you. I use uh, sort of like a grease pencil in conjunction with my oil painting. Normally, I tell you, this is my party line, this is what I say, that I'm using the pencils mostly for variety of texture. As you can see, for instance, and this is an unfinished part of the painting, but you can see bits of the pencil in there. And I use the pencil not so much to achieve realism, to draw with, but I use the pencil because I like the effect. Here's, you can see it also over here. See all that pencil? So I'm using a little bit for, re for rendering, for similitude, but mostly I'm using it for texture. Now, having it said that, let me go ahead and confess that a few minutes ago, I was holding, again, holding my pencil in this, you know, death control grip manner. And I will confess to you, just for what it's worth, that the tool, that the pencil is a really handy tool for achieving similitude. So I'm, I'm sort of fessing up here that, oh yeah, but on the other hand, yeah, the pencil is a pretty good, pretty good tool for achieving. Hello, Bobo Pop, good to hear from you again. Pretty good tool for achieving realism. Okay, so just drawing with a tool, with a pencil, 
is often easier than drawing with a brush. So just that sort of goes under the the heading of true confessions, if you will. Is normally I'm telling you that the the I use the pencils not for drawing but for texture. But oh look, this time I'm lying. <laughs> okay, now the three step process is mid tones first, then darks, and then lights. Okay, so a, a, a few minutes ago I really already did the mid tone. But let me let me redo some of it again. Now, by mid-tone, I mean it's not real dark and it's not real light. And those are relative terms, of course, compared to compared to what it is that you are in fact painting. So in this case, it's these hands. So I'm using a, a mid-medium flesh tone and covering much of the surface area. And also, by the way, eliminating much of the pencil lines. Not completely, but a lot. Okay, that step number one is done. Now I'm going to pick up a brush that has some dark. And I'm going to make this dark redder. Hands, as you know, generally speaking, our hands are redder, more ruddy, redder than our face. You with you with me on that? Generally speaking. And I'm these hands are completely off the top of my head. I don't have any photograph to look at. I wish I did. I really wish I had a photograph of this man's hands because I do not know what his his particular hands look like and I wish that I did. But I'm just giving him some general average male hands. He's a tall man, so I'm, he has large hands, no doubt. Okay, but here I'm now just doing a little bit of dark shadow wherever there's supposed to be shadow. So a little bit of veins and tendons on the back of his hand down here. By the way, I do like the fact that th these hands are dark, silhouetted, silhouetted against the woman's neck and arm and dress. So I do like the fact that it's dark. In between the fingers, a little bit of darkness. As much as possible when you're painting, painting anything, but especially the temptation when you're painting portraiture is to go brushy, brushy, brushy. You know, I use that term a lot. To put the paint down and brush it, brush it, brush it. And um, try to avoid that temptation. Mark Carder, C-A-R-D-E-R, -E does an excellent job of describing or, or helping students do the, the opposite of brushy, brushy. That's if you want to look him up. He does. He's a very good teacher. Okay, step two is done. Mid tone, dark tone. Oh, let me be. Okay, let me wait, wait, wait. Let's pretend <laughs> that I want to come in here before I move on, and so I'm, this time I'm going to divide step two. Mid, dark, light. Let's divide dark into kind of dark and real dark. So I just picked up, of all things, a really good sharp pencil, and I've put some even darker paint on these on the on this pencil and I'm coming in here and doing a few even darker details. Got it? Okay. Done with that. I'm gonna wipe that brush off because I think I'm gonna be using it again in a few minutes. Now, third step, light. Now I am definitely going to do the light tones in more than one step. Again, and the the point of this formula is it matters the order. It is the order. Mid, dark, light. Does it work if we do dark, mid, light? No. Does it work if we do light, dark, mid? No. Does it work if, okay, you got the idea? This, it, and again, every rule, of course, every rule in painting can be broken, but you better know what the rule is before you break it, or you're probably just screwing up. And uh, so learn this. You can argue with me only after you are better than me. I don't want to, that's not what I really want I mean. What I mean, <laughs> what I mean is if you find, if there's a particular reason for doing something opposite of that. Yes, I am using oil, but yes, you can use those pencils. I use those pencils. Part of the reason I like them is they play well with both oil and acrylic. So I don't know where else to get them, but from Jerry's Artorama, you can get them online. Jerry's Artorama and they're called Jumbo Jet Black. And and they interact, to, in my opinion, they interact in a very pleasant manner with both water media 
and oil media. Now, they interact differently, but they interact well. A few people have asked me about archival. Um, I don't think there's any problem whatsoever. I don't think there will ever be, because once you paint oil over the pencil, they essentially turn into oil paints. Okay, now, so I've just done one layer of light highlights on those hands. Now I'm going to come, I'm mixing up, picking up some titanium white on this without cleaning the brush. And now I'm going to hit even the lighter areas. I'm assuming you, you can discern whose hand is whose here. Who's, this is his thumb. This is her thumb. Right, these are her three fingers. These are obviously his four fingers up here. I'm going to go back to a, a little bit m more mid-tone just for a second. A lighter uh, for the top of his hand here. I want just a little bit more. Now, I don't really want tons and tons of attention drawn to these hands. So, I'm, I might be able to leave them. Now, what I'm doing right now is not painting the hands at all, but painting her shoulder behind the hand and thereby finishing, if you will, the drawing of his hands. Now, little light area right here. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to um, wipe this brush, the same brush I've just been using, wipe it off with a tissue, not clean it with terpenoid or Gamsol. Just wipe it off. Whoops, my waste basket tipped over. Hang on just a second. I tell people often, I really like trash. <laughs> I'm a man who likes trash. By which I mean, I don't like, I like trash within reach of anywhere I happen to be working. <laughs> I don't want to have to walk anywhere. So I always, okay, so this again, uh, I'm now doing what what you could call just highlights, real highlights, almost pure white, except it's a, no, it's not really, it's a dirty, dirty um, titanium white. Oh, here's an important thing, boy, I almost forgot here. These people just got married, right? So, if either of their left hands show up, it's pretty important that I put a ring on that left hand, so... I'm going to pick up, not, not crazy about this one stroke right here. So this that's a cheat. What I just did right there is a cheat. That is to say, um, I'm uh, applying a stroke that I don't want it to look like a stroke. Does that make sense? You can cheat, but you, you, you have to do it well. <laughs> you want to be careful. Okay, I'm mixing up a dull, dull, dirty orange color, yellow-orange to do his ring, just a touch, that's all. Now follow that up with a, a bright sparkle, sharp sparkle on his ring. There, and that, that's, I think that's, that's his ring. Nah, it doesn't look good enough. I'm gonna smear it around a little bit more. I really want my client to, to recognize that I put a ring on his hand. little shadow. There we go. I think that's good enough. Okay, now that I've got this little tiny brush, again, in using a brush like this, in fact, just about the whole time you're using it, you are cheating, in fact. This is, this is you know, if, I, keep, I know I always talk about John Singer Sargent, the god of portraiture, at least American portraiture, and uh, he holds his own among the Europeans as well, I believe. Um, John Singer Sargent would never paint with a brush this size. He would never hold his brush in this manner. So everything that, <laughs> everything that I'm doing right now is a cheat, and I'm, I, I'm trying to make it look like I didn't use a brush like this. He might use a brush like this, if that makes sense to you. So when you use a brush like this, you, want it, you don't want it to leave a mark, so to speak. You don't want to leave a trail that you used this kind of brush. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's talk about these faces. 
soon as I finish. Sorry, I, okay, let's not talk about these faces yet. Let's finish these hands. I'm still cheating, still using a far too small brush. Okay, I think that's good enough. Will you agree? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I And of course I get, I, I can revisit all of this at any point. This, her arm down here is not finished. But let's talk about these faces. And to do that, I want to get the, the photograph back up again that I have. So I'm, I'm fairly pleased, fairly pleased with the similitude, with the likeness that I have. Um, but not totally pleased with the texture on their faces. I mentioned this the other day. I don't know if anybody of you were watching. I think I believe it was on this this very painting, the last time I was painting here. I mentioned this, and now I'm going to demonstrate it. That is to say, let me let me let whoops, whoops jerking you all over here. <laughs> Whoa! There we go. By the way, I dropped my not dropped. I had my phone in my pocket yesterday afternoon while I was in the pool for about an hour. <laughs> anyway, it seems to have survived. Um, I hope. Um, if I were as good as a big dog portrait painter, I wouldn't have to do this. If I were as good as John Singer Sargent, Daniel Green, Nelson Shanks, uh, a whole list of, you know, uh, uh, American portrait painters of America, if I were as good as they, I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm just not that good. So what I have to do, besides, of course, I used a grid for, first of all, the cheat. I don't always do that, but I did here. Um, it, what I've done is achieved a likeness with a whole bunch of what I call tongue painting, right? Holding the brush in this god-awful grip, going like this, and painting like this. Are you with me? So I have, I believe, achieved a pretty good likeness. Most people would say the painting is done. But I want to, without ruining the likeness, I want to make this painting look like I'm better than I am. You with me? So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is some final strokes on the faces Final strokes on the faces that are good strokes, that are bold and so forth. So let me start with the woman. Now, a, bu a good part of this, and again, I would I would point you to Michael, Mark, I mean, not Michael, Mark Carter does a good job of teaching this. So I'm right now I'm doing pretty carefully stroke, leave it. Did you see that? I've got the right color on my brushes. That's very important. Stroke, leave it. Now along the bridge of her nose. Stroke, leave it. Couple more of these, just a couple more. And by the way, the color that's on my brush is a slightly blush, uh, slightly darker than, than the lightest part of her face. And the dark mix up right now. Um, let me show you my let me my palette just for a minute okay by the way this is a, a trick that i invented myself bought this easel i glued and screwed these boards in here there's there's a little lip underneath there then i ran then i ran a um bead of hot glue along this edge of one of these kinds of palettes i forget what it's called and it came with my uh my planer easel so that i can slip this under there and that bead, see, catches that lip. So it means I don't have to hold the, the palette, which for me is very important because, of course, normally I paint with two hands. Okay, so I've just got this whole mess. This is what I really want to show you. I've got this whole mess of flesh tones. I've been working for a while. Um, I am this messy. Some people would be a lot neater. Daniel Green has all his little, you know, all pre-mixed colors all in a row. Great, great, great. Good for him. Uh, that's not what I'm doing. So that's that's what I'm working from right now, okay? back then to the painting up here um so the color that i've mixed up is 
slightly darker than the main area of her face. Okay, now that was a bad stroke right there because I went stroke, stroke, stroke. I'm going to do it a little bit more. Uh, okay, I think I've got the right color now. Here's what I want to demonstrate. Right color, stroke, and leave it. Uh, right color, stroke, and leave it. Are you with me? No brushy, brushy. Okay, now I think I'm done with those mid-tones. Now I'm going to go back to my palette, and I'm mixing some white, little tiny bit of Naples yellow. By the way, I love Naples yellow. It's like halfway between a yellow ochre and a, and a white. It's a very, very pale yellow, a little cleaner than a, um, than a yellow ochre. But now I've got too much paint on this brush, so I'm just going to wipe it off with a tissue. Because I used it, I usually use brushes to mix my paint. I almost never use a paint palette to mix my colors with. Okay, now let's find out if this is the right color or not. Uh, I think that's right. Stroke and leave it. I know I keep saying the same thing as I'm trying to make that point. Uh, along the side of her nose. Stroke and leave it. Cheek. See, the, the temptation, what most of us want to do is, like, there's, you see the difference between the blush part of her cheek and the light part? Most, I'm going to do it, in fact. Most of us, what we want to do is come in here and blend. Blendy, 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 blendy. See? But now I've just lost the good painting. So I'm going to come back here again and put a stroke down and leave it. Now, the... <laughs> okay, I cheated. In fact, I'm going to go up here and cheat on her forehead. Another stroke and leave it. So what Mark Carter says is you want to mix up a color that... Let, let's say her cheek is rounded. Over here it's dark and red, then it's mid-tone, then it's light. Okay? He says you want to mix up this color, this color, this color, and this color. You want all three or four shades on your palette, so you just put a stroke down. Instead of putting down dark and light and blending the two together. Does that make sense? Okay, now that, again, that's really, really good point. And I, did, I didn't make that up. I mean, I believe it and I follow it. I try to do it. Okay, so let's back back to the painting. Whoops, whoops, whoops mistake. So there I just cheated completely, uh, wiping it off with my finger. I'm finding that the color that's on my brush is actually too light. So let me go back and make a compromise doing what I just described. Okay, that's better. That's better. Okay, now I think I can go to that lighter color and come back and do one last stroke. Nope, lighter, lighter, lighter. One last, so that when the finished painting is done, people can see brush strokes on her face. And it looks as though I've painted it, if you will, like a little bit more like John Singer Sargent. I didn't really, I cheated. I give you permission to cheat the way I'm cheating. Does that make sense? Um, now down here on her throat. The, now, the challenge is, and again, I'm talking a lot about Mark Carter. That he deserves to be talked about. The challenge is, here is when you do this kind of thing is that you over-exaggerate the contrast in your painting. So be careful about that. And again, go look to him. Watch him for how he says to avoid the mistake of doing too much contrast. Now I think I can come down and finish her shoulder a little bit. I have almost no detail on her shoulder. Now, if you did you see me just do brush, 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 right? So in the system that I'm trying to teach you right now, that's against the rules. Do you understand? I'm going to cheat anyway. I'm just going to try not to make it look like I cheated. 
I would like Mark Carter to be able to look at this painting and say, yeah, you did it the right way. <laughs> Just not his voice at all, by the way. And by the way, now I'm really cheating because I'm supposed to do dark first and then come back with light. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. My brush accidentally picked up a slab of... Um, a slab of liquid. Not good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Now let's do his face. Same thing. Are you with me? So I'm going back to now a medium dark tone. Reddish. Slightly reddish. By the way, for what it's worth, I'm picking up... I have two reds here. What, what, uh, two... I'm using two reds. Uh, Naphthol Crimson, which is the dark, cool red, and Scarlet Lake, which is a lighter, um, warmer red. Okay? So let's see if I've got the right color on this brush. Put down a stroke and leave it. Put down a stroke and leave it. Yep, yep, yep. Close enough. Most of us, myself included, we tend to be too pussy-footed about our brush strokes and our colors. And that is certainly guilty. I am certainly guilty of that. Once again, I'm doing the, the mid-tone warm blush tone on his face, and I think I'm already finished. Now I'm going to come back and do the highlights. So, again, I don't do this very well. <laughs> I know better than I'm able. And part of it is simply because I'm in a big hurry, which is not a good excuse. Um, now I'm doing the highlights. Put down a stroke and leave it. Put a stroke down and leave it. Resist the temptation to come back and... But it has to be the right color, you see, to do that. Okay. Side of his nose. Oh, by the way, I'm, I need to change his nose. I just realized that. There we go. That's good. Top of his cheek. Side of his temple. A smile crease. Another smile crease down here. And he's, his neck is bent down. Okay, you probably can't see that. I think I'm going to let it go. At, I'm going to quit there. Wait, I need one stroke under his nose. Um, but that's a, a good trick, I think. Most of you should know for... Until you get as good as Rembrandt, Singer, Sargent, and all those other big dogs, um, you can cheat a little bit, okay? Whew. And I think that I'm going to quit there uh, for now, quit the broadcast. I may come back later and talk about how I'm going to do this man's suit, this tux. And I will tell you that I went specially and got some ivory black and put it on my palette down here. But basically, how am I going to do the tux? Mid-tone is already done. I like the mid-tone. I'm going to do dark details, then light highlights. And of course, light, quote-unquote, highlights on a black tux is a very, very relative statement. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll be back again probably.